through some pretty tough times uh, with the death of Andy. Um, I think that we were we were in it for real, and, and uh, in terms of you know wanting to yeah, making the decision to play music after Andy died was definitely uh, it was definitely you know is this what you want to do with your life kind of decision, and uh, and I think we had made that decision, and uh, uh, you know and playing with Matt Cameron, who is you know Matt Cameron can play on a tin can, and somebody will want to sing over the top of it. So I mean that alone, uh, you know. Between me and Jeff and Mike being inspired to play music and having Matt play, I mean, I think that uh, uh, those are the elements that you know. It was a, probably a pretty unique sounding demo compared to you know, a lot of stuff. So you'd pass the crossroads. Right? You know, I, I think it's commitment. Oh yeah, 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 absolutely. And I think that was probably the time where it was made. Okay. Yeah. Tell us about the, the nuts and bolts of, of, of your recording right now. I mean, how? How does it work? What's the actual mechanism? Who goes where and does what? Hmm. Well, lately we've been being very simple about how we record. Uh, uh, usually we pick a studio and uh, we set a PA up in there, which is not typical of hmm. recording. Uh, we have monitors. We don't use headphones. We're all in the same room. Um, and generally uh, we'll come in and uh, jam for half an hour. Uh, something might happen right then and there that we want to arrange, get on tape. Uh, um, uh, it might not. Then you know, uh, either Eddie or you know whoever will uh, say, "Let's work on this one," or "I have a riff," or you know. Uh, and usually we will hammer it out and record it and be done with it by the end of that day. You know, that's generally how we work. We might go back and do a touch up a week later or something. We you know usually we're in the studio for three or four days. You know, for instance, Vitology, we would be in the studio for three days. Then we'd be on the road again, or we'd take a break, and then, you know, so we would want to finish the record. We didn't even know we had a record. We went in one time like that, then we went in another time like that, then we went in one more time like that, and then we'd look back and we'd say, oh, maybe we have a record, and then we started sorting through the record and saying, okay, well, now we have to finish this one for sure. And, uh, but it's it's been a very, uh, especially lately, it's been very, very spontaneous, and, uh, and, and pretty much uh, leave the rough edges, and uh, that's kind of exciting. I mean, I'm... I'm we, I think we were all thrilled when, when Phytology got the reviews that it did. Um, just because I think at the end of that, and, and maybe even especially me, I tend to be maybe more of a perfectionist than other people in the band, but I really didn't feel like it was, it was you know, for, it wasn't the ultimate record that I, it, especially musically, you know, lyrically and, and vocally, it's, it's great. But just as far as the band, I'm, I'm definitely, a, you know, I, I want it to be uh, taken to the next level always. So... Uh, and a lot, there's a lot of raw sort of things there. And Mike McCready was going through a very tough time, and maybe his presence is not felt as much. And uh, uh, there was there were some things about it that I didn't think were as good. But I knew that we went in there, and every time we were in the studio, we were putting something into it, and we were going for it. And 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 that just proves to me once again that it's really about the attitude in your chest when you're playing, and it has as much to do with it the, than the whatever the riff is, you know, or, or whatever the performance is that it's that it's. You know, we were there for uh, to make good music, and and that translated. And so that was that was satisfying to know that, you know, that would, that you can still make a record that just, you know, like I'm sure Rolling Stones records were made that like that a million times, and you listen back and they're perfect. You wouldn't change a goddamn thing. But you know, at the time Keith was probably totally out of it, and they probably had to use a take from some other take, and not everyone was happy with it, or you know. But it's it's just one of those great things about rock music where you you know. Shitty sometimes all right. <laughs> I guess the word is like spirit. Is there a certain spirit that goes into it that you can go back to? Sure, I think that's a that's a good word for sure. Um, us Pearl Jam fans look at all three record three, three records as being very different mm. entities. Um, how about on, on your part? Uh, yeah, obviously, I mean, absolutely it has its own little. Defining characteristics. Sure, I, I think uh, I think that's a very accurate description. And it's something where I think we're all really excited about too. It's like something that, like you know, one it sets a standard and says this is, you know, for us to release a record, it really does have to, you know, uh, you know, make a step, you know, and uh, and it, it just gives us it gives us faith, especially in the process of sticking with 
a group of individuals that all have very strong opinions about how things, you know, you can see certain bands, you know, uh, that maybe one person is, is fully in control of the band where maybe they'll make a couple records that sound pretty much the same or bands that have their way of working on songs so sorted out that the general types of songs or the way they work out is, is very similar and, and that's good but for us I think we're all excited about the fact that the way our machine works or the band works is it's it's definitely like a it's not something you can really define very easily and that makes me think that it can last for a while and, and keep developing and, and uh, there's a lot there's a lot more to it it hasn't all been sorted out you know that it, that, that, you know, that it will creak and fall down and not work sometimes and, and be crappy sometimes, but at the same time it will also take chances and, and try to do things, uh, you know, keep trying to redefine itself. Yeah, I, I had to like put a little s snappy one-liner to describe each of the three records. How would you, <laughs> what, what would you <laughs> uh, I don't know. Uh, that's a tough question. I don't know you if I can answer that. <laughs> you can't maybe simplify to that. Uh, just uh, maybe over the course of the interview, I'll come up with a <laughs> selection of snappy comebacks, but I'm not too good under the gun. Uh -huh. Really, uh, you know, it hasn't established its presence yet in Japan, mm. so maybe we could use this as a good opportunity mm -hmm. for you to tell right. us about what the, the aims of the, mm -hmm. the label are. Uh, well, I think that I, I'm not exactly sure when the records are going to be released over here, but it's not too far off. Um, and there's uh, there's there's six releases. Uh, uh, there's a Malfunction record, which is just about to be released in the United States, which is old uh, eight track demos from uh, I guess 88, 89, maybe 87, 88, something like that. Uh, classic era Malfunction with. Uh, uh, very, very, some highlight Andy Wood performances. Uh, his version of Wang Dang Sweet and Tang by Ted Nugent, which is stunning, to say the least. Uh, we're going to uh, re-release the Brad record, which uh, was released in uh, the United States. Brad. 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 Uh, uh, about a year ago or whatever. Uh, but it will get uh, um, much more of a, uh, a push this time. And uh, it'll be released worldwide, which I'm very excited about because I'm very proud of that record. Uh, the Weapon of Choice is a band from Los Angeles, uh, fronted by Lonnie Marshall, uh, who is Arik Marshall, who played guitar with the Chili Peppers for a while, but he's, uh, uh, it's his brother. Uh, but anyway, uh, very exciting uh, 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 band, very much in the, a live band with, you know, trombone and uh, just amazing grooves, very much in the vein of, you know, Parliament, Funkadelic, uh, very much of a party uh, 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 in, intense band, but very very funny, but biting at the same time. Um, uh, Devilhead, which is a band uh, with Brian and Kevin Wood, who are both Andy's brothers, who are equally as talented as Andy was. His older two older brothers, um, uh, and uh, uh, a band called Pros and Concepts, uh, which is a Seattle rap band. Um, per, per, was that pearls and concepts? No, pros. Oh, pros and concepts. P R O. Oh, pros and concepts. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and uh, uh, let's see, is that all six? Let's see if I can remember now. <laughs> I think that's six. Mm -hmm. uh, so that 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 that's uh, that, that that's those are the basically the bands, and and most of these bands are people that I've had you know either relationships with over a long period of time or have met and over a long period of time realized that uh, these people were super talented and that I would be, I, I owed it to them to try to help them, <laughs> you know, it's when you see a band that's, that's super talented and you, and, you, and you understand that you've been in that same situation and that, and that you can help, you know, the, the business side of this, of learning how to, you know, I mean, we've gone through so many hells in terms of Mother Love Bone and and other bad deals or publishing deals and all sorts of shit. You, over a period of time, you learn about a lot of this stuff. And uh, you know, I have some free time now. Pearl Jam is not working all the time. This is something that comes very natural to me in terms of uh, of one wanting to be involved in, in in production and wanting to be involved. You know, having an easy time, sort of uh, getting my way with record companies. Uh, uh, and, and, and just having pretty good intuition about the business side of this um, 
and when it comes to bands that are my friends um, and uh, people that I respect, you know, it's something I, I feel almost obligated to do. You know, and that's sort of what happened in this in this scenario. It's, you know, a